The A-Team was a popular television show that aired in the 1980s. Following a group of ex-United States Army Special Forces soldiers who became mercenaries after escaping from prison. This action-packed series captured the hearts of many, and its memories still bring joy to fans today. The show became a big hit, showcasing the thrilling adventures of these soldiers of fortune. The 1983 TV series The A-Team featured a talented cast, but behind the scenes, the actors had a strained relationship. Despite their on-screen chemistry, the entire cast reportedly hated each other. The tension was particularly palpable between Mr. T, who played B, a barracus, and George Papar, who starred as John Hannibal Smith. Mr. T had a history of disliking actors who he believed looked down on him due to his lack of classical training. This was the case with Papar, who reportedly called Mr. T the worst actor in the cast. Papar's comments only served to widen the rift between the two, and they barely spoke to each other during the filming of the show. Despite the animosity between the cast members, the team was a massive success and remains a beloved classic. The show's popularity can be attributed to the strong performances of its leads, even if they couldn't stand each other off screen. The tension between Mr. T and Papar was never addressed publicly, and the cast continued to work together until the show's end in 1987. However, the animosity between them was well known within the industry and has since become a part of the show's enduring legacy. In the end, the A Team stands as a testament to the power of great casting and the importance of separating an actor's personal feelings from their professional obligations. Despite their differences, the cast was able to deliver a captivating era and entertaining show that has resonated with audiences for decades. Hulk Hogan, in his memoirs, revealed the tense relationship between Mr. T and George Papar during the filming of the 1980s TV series, The A Team. According to Hogan, the two actors had a strong dislike for each other. Mr. T, whose real name is Lawrence Turogue, was born and raised in Chicago Southside. He grew up in a large family with 12 siblings and a single mother, which made for a challenging life. Mr. T's tough upbringing motivated him to work hard and improve his status, eventually becoming a successful actor and professional wrestler. Despite their differences, Mr. T and Papar were both accomplished actors in their own right. Mr. T was known for his tough guy persona and his iconic role as B, a Barakas in the A-Team, while Papar was a renowned actor who had starred in numerous films, including Breakfast at Tiffany's and the A-Team's pilot episode. The tension between Mr. T and Papar was well known on the set of the A-Team and it often made for a difficult working environment. However, despite their differences, the show was a massive success and remains a beloved classic among fans of 80s television. In conclusion, Hulk Hogan's memoirs shed light on the strained relationship between Mr. T and George Papar during the filming of The A-Team. Mr. T's background, growing up in a large family on Chicago's South Side, shaped his tough persona and motivated him to improve his status. Both Mr. T and Papar were accomplished actors, but their differences led to tension on set. Nevertheless, the A-Team remains a beloved classic, and Mr. T's legacy as B, a Barakas, continues to endure. George Papar, born in Detroit, came from a middle-class family and found success as a leading man in cinema during the 1960s. Before his time on the A-Team, he had already made a name for himself in Hollywood with notable roles in films like Breakfast at Tiffany's and How the West Was Won. However, Papar's journey to fame was not without its challenges. In the early 1980s, tension arose between Papar and his A-Team co-star. Mr. T, the conflict began when Mr. T took offense to a magazine article where Papar criticized his acting background and expressed his skepticism about Mr. T's ability to handle the role of B. A. Barakas. Papar's remarks were not well received by Mr. T, who saw them as a personal attack. The two actors had a strained relationship throughout the filming of the A-Team, with Mr. T often feeling disrespected and undermined by Papar's behavior. Despite this, the show was a success and remains a beloved classic among fans of 1980s television. The conflict between Papar and Mr. T is a reminder of the challenges that can arise when working on a high-pressure television show even among a talented, inexperienced cast. Despite their differences, both actors were able to deliver memorable performances and leave a lasting impact on popular culture. 
The a -team, a popular 1983 television series, featured a group of former Special Forces soldiers who became mercenaries for hire. Despite the off-screen conflicts that arose among the cast members, the on-screen chemistry between them remained strong, making the show a success. One of the most memorable actors from the show was Mr. T, who played the role of B. A. Baracus. His character's tough exterior and unyielding personality made him a fan favorite, and his catchphrase, I pity the fool, became a cultural phenomenon. Dwight Schultz, who played the role of Howling Mad Murdoch, also had a positive experience working on the show. Schultz was known for his eccentric portrayal of Murdoch, a pilot with a history of mental health issues. However, despite his enjoyment of working on the show, Schultz had issues with George Papar, who played the role of Hannibal Smith. Papar, a seasoned actor with a successful career in Hollywood, was known for his ego and cold demeanor on set. Schultz has spoken publicly about the tension between him and Papar, stating that Papar's behavior made it difficult to work together at times. Despite these challenges, the cast of the A team managed to maintain a professional working relationship, and the show became a beloved classic. The on-screen chemistry between the characters was undeniable, and the show's action-packed storylines and memorable one-liners have made it a staple of 80s television. In conclusion, while there may have been conflicts and challenges behind the scenes of the A team, the cast's ability to put aside their differences and work together resulted in a successful and entertaining show. The on-screen chemistry between the characters, particularly between Mr. T's B, a Barakas, and Dwight Schultz's Howling Mad Murdoch, remains a highlight of the series and a testament to the talent and dedication of the cast. Schultz, a key figure behind the scenes of the 1983 TV series The A-Team, had strong opinions about the show's cast he held a deep admiration for Mr. T, who played the role of B, Ibericus. Schultz considered Mr. T to be a hardworking and amicable individual who brought a lot of positive energy to the set. On the other hand, Schultz had a less favorable view of George Papar, who starred as John Hannibal Smith. Despite any personal differences, the cast maintained a high level of professionalism throughout the production of the series. They were able to hide any uncomfortable atmosphere and display great on-screen chemistry, which contributed to the show's success. In summary, Schultz had a positive view of Mr. T, but had some reservations about the part. Despite any personal differences, the cast was able to maintain a professional demeanor and demonstrated strong on-screen chemistry. Melinda Kilia, an actress known for her role as Amy Amanda Allen or Triple Up in the 1983 TV series The A Team, found popularity and appreciation, especially among journalists, for her portrayal of the character. Kilia's performance was well received, and she felt that her role offered significant potential for development. However, Kilia experienced conflicts with the show's producers due to her belief that her character deserved more screen time. Despite her contributions to the series, these disagreements ultimately led to her dismissal after the second season. Throughout her time on the A team, Kilia's character, Triple A, served as a valuable addition to the show. Her presence brought depth to the storylines, and her interactions with the other characters helped create engaging and dynamic episodes. Despite her departure from the series, Melinda Kilia's role as Amy Amanda Allen remains noteworthy in the annals of 1980s television. Her portrayal of Triple A contributed to the show's success and solidified her place as a memorable character in the eyes of fans and critics alike. After his role in the 1983 TV series The A Team, Marley Gibbs' son, Jordan Kilia, had a successful career in both television and film. Kilia's acting skills were showcased in various notable TV shows, including Beverly Hills 90210, Fantasy Island, St. Elsewhere, and Murder, She Wrote. His presence on the small screen was well received, and he became a familiar face to many TV viewers. In addition to his work on TV, Kilia also appeared in several films. His film credits include Brotherly Love and Wagons East. These roles further solidified his status as a talented actor and expanded his fan base. Overall, Jordan Kilia's career in the entertainment industry has been marked by a variety of notable appearances and a consistent display of acting ability. His work has left a lasting impression on audiences and has contributed to the ongoing tapestry of television and film.
in 2010. A film remake of the popular 1983 TV series The A-Team was released. Some original cast members, including Dirk Benedict, who played Faceman, appeared in the new version. However, Mr. T, who portrayed B, a Barakas in the original series, declined to have a cameo and criticized the film for its violent content. Dirk Benedict, who had positive memories of his time on the original show, expressed disappointment with his brief appearance in the remake. He found his role too short and felt it did not do justice to his character. Mr. T, known for his role as B, a Barakas in the original 1983 TV series The Ateen, did not attend the premiere of the remake. He expressed that he found the new version to be too violent and hoped that the new team would have good luck. On the other hand, Dwight Schultz, who played the role of Howling Mad Murdoch in the original series, had positive things to say about the remake. However, he felt that it strayed too much from the original series. Schultz appreciated the new take on the show, but believed that it could have stayed more true to the spirit of the original. Both actors had distinct opinions about the remake, with Mr. T focusing on the level of violence and Schultz commenting on the deviation from the original series. Despite their differing views, both were involved in the creation of the team and their opinions provide insight into the evolution of the franchise. The A-Team television series, which first aired in 1983, received mixed reviews when it was first released, but eventually turned a profit. The show did not make a significant cultural impact, and plans for a sequel were canceled. The series featured a group of ex-military soldiers who became mercenaries for hire, helping those in need while on the run from the law. One of the show's main characters was Faceman, played by Dirk Benedict. Initially, the role was given to Tim Dunigan, but he was replaced by Benedict after the first episode. Dunigan's portrayal of Faceman was deemed not to fit the character's desired image, and Benedict was brought in to replace him. Dirk Benedict's portrayal of Faceman made him a household name. Faceman, also known as Templeton Peck, was the team's smooth-talking con man and womanizer. Benedict's charm and wit brought the character to life and made him a fan favorite. His portrayal of Faceman was one of the reasons for the show's success and longevity, in conclusion, while the A-Team had a slow start, it eventually found its footing and became a profitable television series. The role of Faceman, originally played by Tim Dunigan, was recast with Dirk Benedict, who became a household name due to the show. Benedict's portrayal of Faceman was one of the reasons for the show's success and cemented his place in television history. Murdoch, a key member of the 1983 TV series The A-Team, had a first name that was never revealed, leaving fans to assume it was Howling Mad. This added to the mysterious and intriguing nature of his character. On the other hand, Mr. T, another prominent figure on the show, was known for his famous catchphrase, I pity the fool contrary to popular belief. This phrase did not originate from the A-Team, but from the 1982 film Rocky III. Mr. T's jewelry was another notable aspect of his appearance on the A-Team. His heavy, ostentatious pieces, including gold chains and rings, were a significant part of his image. However, they were not always comfortable to wear during the shooting of the series. Despite this, Mr. T's jewelry became iconic and added to his distinctive style. The combination of Murdoch's mysterious name, Mr. T's famous catchphrase, and his eye-catching jewelry made them stand out in the show and left a lasting impression on viewers. The A Team's theme tune, composed by Mike Post, is one of the most memorable of the 1980s, standing alongside other popular themes from shows like L.A. Law and Magnum Pi. The tune's upbeat and rhythmic melody, combined with the show's exciting action sequences, made it an instant hit with audiences. The theme tune's popularity was further boosted by its use in the show's opening credits, which featured a montage of the team's thrilling exploits. Despite its popularity, the A Team also faced controversy for its heavy use of gun violence. The show featured the main characters, a group of former Special Forces soldiers, using an array of weapons to take down their enemies. While the show's creators insisted that the violence was portrayed in a stylized and unrealistic manner, critics argued that it glorified gun use and contributed to a culture of violence. Interestingly, despite the show's heavy focus on gun violence, there was only one on-screen death throughout its entire five-season run. The death of General Fulbright, a high-ranking military official, was a rare instance of the show taking a more serious tone. 
However, even this death was not without controversy, as some viewers felt that it was out of character for the show and detracted from its lighthearted tone. Overall, the A-Team's theme tune remains one of the most iconic and memorable of the 1980s, while the show's heavy use of gun violence and controversy surrounding its portrayal of violence continue to be debated among fans and critics alike. General Fulbright, played by Jack Jing, was a significant character in the 1983 TV series The A-Team. His death during combat was a pivotal moment in the show. Fulbright was a no-nonsense general, often butting heads with the A-Team, a group of ex-military specialists wrongly accused of a crime they didn't commit. His death occurred in an episode where the A-Team was working to clear their names and take down a criminal organization. Fulbright's death was a shock to both the characters and the audience, adding a layer of complexity to the show's narrative and further emphasizing the dangers and realities of military combat. In 1972, a group of highly skilled commandos was sent to prison by a military court for a crime they did not commit. These men escaped from a maximum security stockade and went underground in Los Angeles. Still wanted by the government, they survive as soldiers of fortune. If you have a problem, and if no one else can help, maybe you can hire the A-Team. The A-Team is led by John Hannibal Smith, played by George Pappard, known for his catchphrase, I love it when a plan comes together, often with a cigar in hand. The team includes Templeton Faceman Peck, a smooth-talking con artist capable of swindling anyone, and Bosco B. Ibarakis, a tough, mechanical genius who despises flying, necessitating frequent trickery to get him on planes. Finally, there is H.M. Howling Mad Murdoch, a skilled pilot declared insane, often requiring rescue from a mental hospital, adding a layer of humor and unpredictability to the group. Each episode follows a similar formula. The A-Team helps those oppressed by local bullies, crime bosses, or other threats. Initially gaining the upper hand, they often fall into traps but ultimately escape and defeat their adversaries. The show's lighthearted approach ensures that despite numerous shootouts, no one is ever seriously harmed, keeping it suitable for family viewing. The show saw a shift in its later seasons with the introduction of General Hunt Stockwell, played by Robert Vaughn, and Frankie Dishpan Santana, played by Eddie Velez. While Santana was a likable addition, Stockwell's character changed the team's dynamic, forcing them to work for him and the government rather than as independent mercenaries. This shift was less popular with fans. Despite its formulaic plots, the A-Team remains a beloved action series, fondly remembered for its entertaining characters and thrilling adventures. Many fans wished for a reunion movie before George Papar's passing, similar to the Knight Rider 2000 film, but this never materialized. Nonetheless, the A-Team holds a special place in the hearts of those who grew up watching it, providing pure fun and excitement. The casting process for the A-Team TV series in 1983 was a careful selection of actors who could bring the unique blend of action, comedy, and camaraderie to the screen. George Papar, known for his leading roles in movies like Breakfast at Tiffany's, was cast as Colonel John Hannibal Smith, the team's leader. His experience and gravitas were considered perfect for the role. For the role of Lieutenant Templeton Faceman Peck, producers wanted someone charming and handsome. After considering a few actors, they chose Dirk Benedict, who had gained popularity from his role in the TV series Battlestar Galactica. Mr. T, a former professional wrestler, was chosen to play B, a barricus. His imposing physique and charisma made him an ideal fit for the character. Interestingly, producers had initially approached another actor, but when they saw Mr. T in a talk show, they were so impressed that they decided to cast him instead. Lastly, for the role of Howling Mad Murdoch, the producers wanted someone who could portray the character's eccentricity and unpredictability. After several auditions, they chose Dwight Schultz, an experienced stage actor. The chemistry between the actors was tested during the initial filming. The easy camaraderie and banter between Papar and Benedict, the intimidating presence of Mr. T, and the unpredictable antics of Schultz all contributed to the show's unique dynamic. The A-Team's casting was a crucial part of its success, bringing together a group of actors who could embody the spirit of the show and keep audiences engaged week after week. The A-Team, a 1983 television series, 
was brought to life by director Craig R. Baxley. Known for his action-packed style, Baxley emphasized high-energy sequences and stunts. His vision was to create a fast-paced, thrilling show with a touch of humor. Baxley's creative influences included 1970s action films and the comics of the time. He aimed to translate the larger-than-life feel of comics to the small screen. His approach was characterized by dynamic camera movements and visually striking compositions. Collaboration was key to Baxley's process. He worked closely with the cast and crew, fostering a creative environment where ideas were freely exchanged. He encouraged the actors to bring their own interpretations to their characters, resulting in a more dynamic and engaging performance. Baxley's style was also evident in his use of practical effects and stunts. He preferred to perform stunts for real, adding a layer of authenticity to the action sequences. This approach was well received by both the cast and the audience, contributing to the show's success. In summary, Craig R. Baxley's directorial vision for the team was marked by his action-packed style, comic book influences, and collaborative approach. His use of practical effects and stunts added a layer of realism to the show, making it a standout in the world of 1980s television. The A-Team, a popular 1983 TV series, was known for its high-energy action sequences and intriguing set designs. The show's creators faced various logistical challenges in filming, especially when it came to recreating the team's distinctive van, the iconic black and red striped GMC Vandera. A significant portion of the series was filmed on sound stages in Los Angeles, where set designers built various sets including the team's living quarters and the famous A-Team Command Post, a converted military commandeered truck. These sets allowed for greater control over lighting, sound, and other production elements. However, the series also featured many exterior scenes, which required filming at various locations. The A-Team frequently found themselves in diverse settings, from bustling city streets to remote desert landscapes. To achieve this, the production team scouted numerous locations in Southern California, including the outskirts of Los Angeles and the nearby desert areas. One notable challenge was filming the show's famous action sequences, which often involve complex stunts and pyrotechnics. To ensure safety and efficiency, the production team employed innovative techniques and technologies, such as using miniatures and visual effects to create the illusion of destruction and mayhem. Despite these challenges, the A Team's production team managed to create a captivating and enduring series that resonated with audiences worldwide. The show's unique blend of action, comedy, and drama, combined with its iconic set design and locations, helped establish the A Team as a classic of 1980s television. The A Team, a popular 1983 television series, featured a lively and energetic score that significantly contributed to its overall appeal. The music, composed by Mike Post and Pete Carpenter, was designed to complement the show's fast-paced action and light-hearted tone. Mike Post, an experienced composer known for his work on hit TV shows like Law & Order and Hill Street Blues, brought his signature style to the A-Team. The score features a variety of instruments, including electric guitars, drums, and synthesizers, which create a sound that is both modern and upbeat. Pete Carpenter, who worked with Post on many projects, was also a crucial part of the creative process. Together, they crafted a sound that perfectly captured the spirit of the show and its characters. The A-Team soundtrack is a blend of action cues and character themes, each one tailored to the specific scene or personality it represents. For example, the theme for the character face is smooth and sophisticated, while the theme for B, A is bold and aggressive. The composers also made use of leitmotifs, recurring musical themes associated with specific characters or ideas to help tie the show together. This technique added a layer of depth and cohesion to the score, making it an integral part of the viewing experience. In addition to the original score, the A Team also featured a number of popular songs from the 1980s. These songs were used to further enhance the show's emotional tone and to provide a sense of time and place. Overall, the music of the A Team played a vital role in the show's success, providing a dynamic and engaging backdrop to the on-screen action and helping to bring the characters and story to life.
One of the most iconic scenes in the 1983 TV series, The Team, is the opening credit sequence, where the team makes a daring escape from a moving tank while being pursued by military forces. The scene is a perfect example of the show's blend of action, humor, and suspense. Director Rod Holcomb uses fast-paced editing and dynamic camera angles to create a sense of chaos and excitement. The use of slow motion during the team's leap from the tank ads to the thrill and drama of the scene. The performances of the main cast, particularly George Papar as John Hannibal Smith, are spot on, with each actor bringing their unique charm and charisma to the scene. The cinematography is also noteworthy, with the use of a muted color palette and gritty textures to create a sense of realism and grit. The scene's impact on the audience is significant, setting the tone for the rest of the series and establishing the team as a force to be reckoned with. Another iconic scene is the episode of Small and Deadly War, where the team infiltrates a neo-Nazi compound to rescue a captured soldier. The scene is a masterclass in tension and suspense, with the team using their military training and quick thinking to outsmart their enemies. Director Michael O'Hurley uses close-ups and tight framing to build tension and create a sense of claustrophobia. The performances of the main cast are once again exceptional, with each actor bringing their unique skills and talents to the scene. The impact of this scene on the audience is significant, showcasing the team's resourcefulness and bravery in the face of danger. It also highlights the show's themes of loyalty, friendship, and justice, which have resonated with audiences for decades. According to Papar, the team was more than just an action show. It was a show about camaraderie, about loyalty, about standing up for what's right, he said in an interview. And I think that's what resonated with audiences. Cinematographer Ray Flynn says that the show's success was due in large part to its unique blend of action and humor. We wanted to create a show that was exciting and entertaining, but also had heart, he said. And I think we achieved that with the Ateen. Overall, the iconic scenes in the Ateen are a testament to the show's enduring appeal and influence. Through masterful direction, exceptional performances, and innovative cinematography, the show has left a lasting impact on audiences and continues to inspire new generations of viewers. The Ateen, a 1983 television series, made a significant cultural and social impact. It resonated with audiences due to its unique blend of action, humor, and camaraderie among its main characters, a group of Vietnam War veterans falsely accused of a crime. The show's influence on pop culture was substantial. Its distinctive theme music became instantly recognizable, and the catchphrase I love it when a plan comes together entered the vernacular. The team's distinctive black and red van also became an iconic symbol of the series. Moreover, the team contributed to discussions on relevant social themes. It explored the post-Vietnam War era, addressing the public's uncertainty and mistrust towards the military. The show also depicted a diverse cast, including an African-American soldier, which was relatively rare for the time. The team's portrayal of a team that uses unconventional methods to fight for justice appealed to viewers. It reflected the societal mood of the 1980s, a decade marked by individualism and self-reliance. The series, in its own way, mirrored the era's cultural ethos. The Team, a 1983 television series, received mixed reviews from critics, but was generally well received by the audience. The show's action-packed storylines and charismatic characters, particularly Mr. T's portrayal of B, a Baracus, were praised. However, some critics criticized the series for its violent content and formulaic plots. Key reviews include John J. O'Connor of the New York Times, who described the show as standard action adventure fare with a team of four Vietnam veterans, three of them fugitives, battling evil and injustice, and Tom Shales of the Washington Post, who called it a show that makes no particular sense, but is fun to watch. Audience reactions were largely positive, with the show becoming one of the most popular of the 1980s. It was nominated for several awards, including a Primetime Emmy for Outstanding Sound Editing for a series in 1983 and 1984. The accolades received by the team are significant as they highlight the show's popularity and enduring appeal. The nominations for sound editing also demonstrate the technical prowess behind the series. The awards and nominations are a testament to the hard work and dedication of everyone involved in the production of the show, from the actors to the crew members. 
The positive reception of the series has also contributed to its lasting legacy, with a show still remembered and celebrated today, over three decades after its initial release. The team's production was full of challenges and camaraderie. Dirt bikes were frequently used for high-speed scenes, and stuntman Eddie H. Jeffries, who doubled for Mr. T, recalls a close call when he flipped over the handlebars, narrowly avoiding injury. The cast and crew formed a tight-knit group, often socializing offset. George Papar, who played Hannibal, was known for his practical jokes, once even convincing a crew member that he'd been fired. A notable anecdote involves Dwight Schultz, who played Howling Mad Murdoch. He was initially hesitant about the role, fearing it would typecast him. To alleviate his concerns, the producers allowed him to direct an episode, which became When You Come and Back, Range Rider. Schultz's direction was well received, and he went on to direct two more episodes during the series. Behind the scenes, the production faced budget constraints, which often led to creative solutions. For instance, the iconic black and red van was initially a Dodge Ram van, but was redesigned and repainted to resemble a GMC Vandera. The show's signature explosions were also achieved through resourceful methods, with crew members using gasoline-soaked rags and firecrackers to create the desired effect. Despite these challenges, the cast and crew remained dedicated to delivering an entertaining show. Their hard work and camaraderie ultimately resulted in a beloved series that continues to captivate audiences today. The A Team, a 1983 television series, holds a significant place in film history due to its unique blend of action, comedy, and camaraderie. The show's distinctive style and storytelling have influenced future filmmaking, particularly in the realms of action adventure and ensemble casts. The A Team follows the adventures of a group of Vietnam War veterans who become mercenaries for hire, using their diverse skills to help those in need while evading capture by military authorities. This innovative concept laid the groundwork for similar shows and movies where a team of experts with unique abilities collaborate to overcome challenges. One of the most notable aspects of the A-Team is its impact on the representation of military units in popular culture. The show popularized the idea of a highly skilled, unconventional team working together to achieve their objectives, which has since been replicated in numerous films and television series, such as the Mission Impossible franchise and the Expendables movies. Moreover, the A Team has inspired several subsequent works, including a 2010 feature film adaptation, which brought the classic series to a new audience. The series has also been celebrated through various merchandise, such as action figures, comic books, and video games, further solidifying its cultural impact. In addition, the A Team has had a lasting influence on the entertainment industry by providing a platform for its talented cast members to showcase their skills. A list actors like Bradley Cooper, Liam Neeson, and Woody Harrelson have cited the A-Team as an inspiration for their careers, highlighting the show's enduring appeal and influence. Overall, the A-Team has left an indelible mark on film history, inspiring future filmmakers and audiences alike with its engaging storytelling and memorable characters. The show's unique blend of action, humor, and teamwork has transcended its original run, continuing to resonate with new generations of viewers if the 1983 TV series The A-Team brought back memories or influenced your perspective on cinema, we'd love to hear from you. Share your favorite moments, characters, or how the show impacted you personally. Did you enjoy the action-packed episodes, or were you drawn to the team's chemistry? How did the series' unique blend of humor, drama, and adventure shape your viewing preferences? We invite you to like, share, and subscribe to join us in exploring more cinematic gems from the past. Let's celebrate the shows that have left a lasting impression on us and continue the conversation about the power of storytelling on screen. Your experiences and insights are invaluable, so don't hesitate to comment and engage with our community.